Okay, to start an observational drawing, you need to look at your object very carefully to uh, work out the proportions between the height and the width and any other areas. I'm going to uh, start my drawing by planning it out. I'm going to draw the guidelines. Draw them lightly. I'm going to draw a bottom and the top of the bottle that I'm drawing. Because my bottle is a symmetrical object, I'm going to draw a line down the middle, carefully and lightly. I'm also going to plan out the sides of my bottle. Okay, just drawing a vertical line really lightly to keep my object planned within that. Okay, now I'm going to work out some of the characteristics of my bottle. I can see that it comes in at the top about uh, three quarters of the way up. I'm just going to lightly draw in the curve that that forms. Okay, I'm drawing lightly because later on I can darken those lines up and I'm sketching it in. The bottom of an object when you're looking down at it is always rounded. So I'm drawing a curve shape around the bottom. Okay, there's the basics of part of my bottle. These should match on either side because it is a symmetrical object. Okay, now I'm starting with the neck of my bottle. And these are all ellipse shapes around here. So I'm going to just draw my ellipses in. Later on, I will darken up these lines by going over them and pressing a bit firmer. So I'm here I'm drawing my bottle neck and the top, and now I'm going to start my lid. Drawing the sides of the lid, working out how high the lid should be. And the top is always, if you're looking down on a top, is an ellipse shape. Okay, there is part of my bottle. Now looking at that and going, yes, that looks reasonably, um, reasonably good in terms of proportion. The bottle actually comes in down here, so I'm just going to bring that in slightly of a curve and then it comes back out about there. So I've got to match that on both sides, making sure that uh, both everything matches because it is a symmetrical object. Okay, now it's got lots of uh, indentations and rims and stuff. I'm going to start with the label. And that's a curve shape, coming curve line coming across there. And it's about the thickness of the band of the... Okay. Now I'm looking at that and I'm thinking that it's reason, it's got reasonably good proportion. So I'm just going to start adding in some of these detailed parts of the bottle. Okay, I can add these in slowly and lightly, adding some of the line work in my drawing going to soon start to put in all the extra details. And get the shape incorrect. Okay, I'm drawing, going over my lines a bit heavier now. Okay, there's the basics of the plastic bottle that I've got in front of me that I'm drawing from. Okay, to put shading on a simple object like this, I'm going to choose my light source coming from this direction. Now if the light's coming from this way, obviously all of this side of the bottle would be light, this side would be dark. I'm going to start to put some shading on here, a cast shadow, and this, and I want this bottle to sit on a table, so I'm going to put the back, back line in. That's the table, where the table meets ends, okay? And my shadow would be roughly through here. Now, today I'm going to use shading techniques, a bit of hatching. Now my hatching, I'm going to use, do it in a curved manner because it will match the shape of my bottle. But before I do that, I'm just going to rub out some of these guidelines so I can get rid of it just to make it look a bit better. Just rubbing out those guidelines some of the lines I don't need. Hence I did them lightly so I can rub them out easily. And you, you won't
won't be able to see them once they've uh, been rubbed out. I accidentally rubbed over some of those lines, so that's okay. I can bring them back in when I shade. Rub any other lines out that you need to. Now you can see that those guidelines were very helpful in me getting my object um, proportionally correct. Let's go back to my pen, got the right size that I'm Whoops, put that back down to three. It's a good size. Okay, here we go with some hatching. I'm flicking, I'm starting at the edge, the dark edge, and flicking my way out. Okay, the pressure at the edge is a little bit heavier, and I can flick them out. Obviously, with hatching, you need to have that so that it is. Uh, closer to the lines, the darker the area. Now you can see I'm bringing some lines across and I'm pressing light lightly here at this stage. Okay, I like a bit of cross hatching, so I'm gonna put some lines cross hatching in there. Carefully. And evenly sort of spaced out, but not too too accurate. A bit of bit of detail, a bit of texture to it. it looks makes it look better. Now I'm starting to put some shorter lines in here. I'm going to go put some lines that actually follow the shape of the, the bottle that I'm drawing. And some shorter, darker, heavier lines across here with my hatching. And you can see that it's slowly starting to take shape and these lines are starting to give it some, some detail in and some 3D effect. Here I'm going to define this sort of neck and the lid to the bottle. Put in some of the smaller details. A bit of hatching and shading in there as well. And start to really emphasize, get some contrast with some really dark areas, especially under the lid. Start to make my bottle object look three dimensional put in some of these detail lines on here of the lid and you can start to see that it is starting to get a bit of shape to it good contrast that's what we want to see we follow the shape using a bit more pressure with my lines now making sure the edge is sort of nice and crisp as well, not too much overhang, but it's got a good amount of texture to my bottle, it's starting to really take shape now, you can see, see the, the contrasting texture that I've created, okay, I'm not worried too much about all the actual finicky details of where the bottle goes in and out, I am putting some extra lines around here. Now my, with my shadow I'm going to do obviously some hatching and start near the actual bottle and flick outwards and with this one I'm going to do some random hatching whoops random hatching in different directions and, and fairly close close together to form all the dark areas because the shadow is going to be quite dark. Almost it looks like controlled scribble almost. Okay, and that is going to start to make as though my bottle is sitting on a table. Yep, and the shadow must start and from one edge to the other corner. Okay, and your shadow is fairly intense at this because it's an intense light source. And in the background you can always shade from your table, table edge, coming up like this. I'm going to put a bit of shading in there to, to define this line here. Some light lines, darker closer to where the table is. You can use pressure and just lines closer together. 
Going, swapping into my rubber just to get rid of some of those lines in the light areas in here and that little mistake that I made previously. And there we have a reasonably completed bottle. You can keep adding details in, but there's a form of cross hatching of a simple drink bottle using cross hatching and some random hatching. And I just can neaten up some of that, use a bit, few more darker areas. I think it needs a bit of darker space over here. Just adding a few bit more hatching through here. And yeah, I'm quite happy with that.